Hey, my friends, time for their quick kind of guide video, this time about resets and reboots and service mode. I like making these videos because you've probably asked this question of Google or on the, one of the Rivian Facebook or, or owner's forms and stuff. And I get so tired of trying to type out a long, detailed response explaining things. So since a picture is worth a thousand words, then 30 pictures per second should be worth 30,000 words. So we're just gonna go ahead and show you how to do it here. Reboot meaning just the UI. So that's the computers and stuff. I often see this where like the GPS activated uh, garage door opener system stops working all of a sudden. Or I even had one time where my position in the navigation system got stuck and wouldn't move properly. There are a couple, basically, if anything is kind of weird in the user interface systems of the vehicle, start with a UI reboot, that's really easy. A reset is really resetting the entire vehicle completely. And you should do that with some care yeah. and perhaps not without talking to Rivian service, honestly. And then service mode also, you can totally get yourself into trouble in there. Uh, that being said, there's a lot of really cool information within that system. And what I've been using it for is actually within there, you can reset the BMS for the low voltage system. So I have a, a high capacity OMU lithium 12 volt battery. And so resetting the low voltage system, I'm trying to get it to kind of recognize and start using the full capacity of that battery, which is around three times bigger than this standard battery. Um, but anyway, that's a subject for an entirely different video. Let's start with just the UI reboot here. So all you do is you press the outside of the, of the rocker buttons here in the left and right, right? There's a left and right for both of them. We're doing the outside too. We just hold it down. Starts making the funky dinging noise. It says, keep holding buttons, display restart soon. And there it goes. We heard a relay click, screens went dark, it's still dinging, and it'll take a couple of minutes to go ahead and come back to life. All right, there we go. And we are back again. So it's just really just like a minute or two and we're alive. Things will respond kind of slowly for a little bit, especially the first time you access things, uh, because essentially it's got to load that graphics off the drive and that kind of stuff. I'm sure it caches all that normally, but it'll respond a wee bit slowly as you kind of go through things the first time around until things catch up and really kind of finish the whole reboot process. It just took a long time to render there. Um, anyway, let's uh, go ahead and do a full system restart. And again, be a little cautious with this. Um, think twice, do it deliberately. Uh, you're going to do the far left of those rocker buttons. Again, not left and right anymore, just the far left one and the emergency flashers up here. So we hold these again, same as before, just hold them both Did together. I long to wander, to discover the deep secrets of coral reefs, explore the wonders So it just said vehicle diagnostic captured there on the dash. And there it goes. Uh, annoyingly, the emergency flashers are going and the radio turned on because I pressed the button. Uh, they will go away here momentarily. Oh, there it goes. Finally, it shut up. So um, what it said there briefly while we had all the noise going on was diagnostic information saved. And I think it's one of the reasons why you need to be a little cautious. They actually say, uh, don't do a full vehicle restart multiple times within a few hours. One of the reasons I suspect is it just overwrites that diagnostic information, those log files. If you have some sort of critical problem, we had that happen to us. We had a battery system fault on our big road trip to Texas back a year ago now. It, was so, it feels like it was yesterday, but yeah. Once we got the vehicle to Texas, we took it into service and they did some diagnostic work to make sure that things were okay with the vehicle. I suspect if you do that twice, essentially you're only preserving the most recent log files. And so I suspect those will be lost. Uh, in addition to that, uh, my understanding is it takes a long time for some systems to fully restart. I don't know, BMS or other things that really have to do a lot of thinking and pondering and checking of analog systems and that kind of stuff and doing it multiple times in succession could freak it out. So don't do that. Um, again, treat the full vehicle restart with some caution. We already have the press brake to start there. So actually the, the drive stuff is already active. Just the main UI is still firing up. While we it finishes here, let me go ahead and point out. So one misconception about the Gen 1 versus Gen 2 Rivians is that uh, the computers are different. Um, while, while that is somewhat correct, the UI computer did not change. 
So everybody who says, oh, yeah, you know, the navigation seems a little more snappy or something. No, it's, it's complete confirmation bias in your head. The UI computer is identical. The other computer systems that drive and run the vehicle have changed, as well as the cameras are now 8K cameras. And so the whole vehicle network is designed to handle those high definition feeds and stuff. And that's all totally cool. That's why we're getting uh, much more advanced automatic driving systems with the Gen 2 Rivians and stuff, as opposed to my Gen 1. Um, but the UI computer is identical. Uh, anyway, we are back up and running now after a full system restart. Let's, as the last thing here, go into service. So what we do is we pull up from the bottom, we pull up from the bottom, we go into settings, go to service, scroll down, and we have service mode. We turn that on. This shows up here in the top. We press that five times, one, two, three, four, five. This should enable the ride application as we swiped up from the bottom here. Go ahead and hit ride. Press this five times. One, two, three, four, five. This enter code comes up. It is 33748. And now we are in service mode. We have all sorts of interesting, cool things. You can do stuff like calibrate your windows. If your windows are noisy and you need to recalibrate when they're closed or not, you can do that. You can do various cool things within here. Again, be cautious. You can frack up your vehicle. Um, be deliberate and be careful about what you're doing. But also, uh, we can go ahead and go into here, low voltage battery service, right? We can go ahead and run this and it says clear 12 volt battery health diagnostics after 12 volt replacement. So this is what the tech does when they swap you to a new battery. And Rivian's been doing an advanced replacement program and replacing everybody's batteries. After they physically swap it, that's what they're hitting down here. They're going ahead and hit run on the low voltage battery service. So actually I'm gonna go ahead and hit it for giggles here for your entertainment, running it, success. That's it, we're done. And we're gonna go ahead and turn off service mode. Uh, turn off service mode, yes. And um, okay, and we wanna go back. It's funny, we're still in that screen, but we're gonna go back to settings here and actually turn off service mode. And now we're good to go. That is how you reboot the UI, how you reset the whole vehicle, how you use service mode, and how you go ahead and reset the low voltage BMS in case you change your 12 volt battery. If you appreciate content like this, please like, please subscribe, please share all that kind of good stuff. Thank you for watching and take care.